Thank you. I'm here today to talk to you about my work here at Berkeley. My team, the Climate Readiness Institute, is working to try to make a big difference in the future of cities as sea levels rise. We have our work cut out for us. We have an enormous challenge and a more rapid set of challenges than we had expected, maybe five years ago only. And we've found out that our west coast of North America is very linked to the west coast of Antarctica. So as we see more and more news articles coming out about rapid melting in West Antarctica, that's about us, because that's going to affect the west coast more. Historically, ice has melted for a long time. If you look back 24,000 years to when the glaciers were melting, we have had very rapid periods of sea level rise. The last eight to 10,000 years has been a really slow period of sea level rise, and that's the period in which cities have appeared. That's the era of the world's great deltas forming. That's the time in which humans have invented cities. So we've never tried to design and manage cities during a period of rapid sea level rise. That's what we have to do now. We are going on to a roller coaster ride with sea level rise. We don't know if we're going to see six to nine feet in the next 35 years, or if we're going to see six to nine feet in the next 125 years, but we're headed there. So our choices have to be organized, they have to be ready, they have to build on each other as time goes by. We don't know yet which one we're going to get, but we know we're on the roller coaster ride. We normally think about flooding as something that happens in New Orleans or New York, but I'm sure a lot of you have used the airports here in the Bay Area. With only 16 inches of sea level rise, both of our international airports flood. The campuses of Facebook and Google flood. Eight more than eight, sewage treatment plants flood, and I know you use those. <laughs> the wetlands we've built and restored over the last 50 years, all the money we've spent on them and all the biodiversity will go away with only 16 inches of sea level rise. And then the three major highways flood in segments that will absolutely stop traffic here in the Bay Area. So we have a very big challenge. And one of the surprises that we've learned about is that groundwater, that saturated zone in the soil, rises on top of a rising sea level. This is something that the Dutch have helped other people understand that this is going to happen. So our sea level rise problem is not just the salt water from the bay, not just river flooding, not just big rainstorms, all of those matter, but also groundwater. My team has just made a map that shows some of the areas most vulnerable to flooding from groundwater. So all these areas in the map that are red are places that could flood bottom up, even if we build levees around them. So that's a lot of the peninsula, Marin, places in Alameda, even downtown Oakland. There are a lot of places that are at risk from groundwater-driven flooding that increases our earthquake liquefaction risk, the speed of shaking and the amount of damage, remobilizes contaminants in the soil, and fills our sewer pipes with water so they don't function. Not good. How do we make a difference? My group at Berkeley makes a difference by inviting in public decision makers and inviting people from the private sector who are at the top of their fields, bringing them together to talk about innovation. And we talk about things that are illegal. We talk about doing fill in parts of the Bay. We talk about things that can't be done in the real world yet. But we get everyone together to talk about what the choices are. And we do that by talking about time-tested ideas plus innovation. I'm talking about long-term time-tested ideas. The idea of digging a hole and making a mound is the fundamental principle of landscape architecture. That's a time-tested idea, and it's been used to create multiple benefits. If your groundwater table rises, your hole fills with water, and it becomes something that lets you control water and use it to get multiple benefits. If we do it in the Bay Area, as I hope we will, it might look like this. We dig a pond and canal system on the land side, use that material to build a super dike, which is just an extra wide levee that supports wetlands and wildlife. And that movement of material from one side to the other allows us to control a lot of things on the land side and on the water side. The Dutch have already done this. They've built luxury housing in ponds. They've actually built housing in their infrastructure to generate money that they can use to do the infrastructure and to build housing that they need. 
we do it here in the Bay Area, it'll also be better for a seismic environment where we'll be able to have structures that are more resistant and robust to shaking if they have these what are called water displacement foundations. And if we can do this in a way that densifies the Bay Edge and builds the wetlands higher, we'll actually be able to align the interests of housing developers and environmental groups. That's the only way to move rapidly towards an adaptation strategy. We have to bring those two groups together. And that's the way I think we can achieve a vision of adaptation for the Bay Area, is by aligning those groups, moving quickly, and making our real economy of building housing do more of the adaptation work for us. Thank you.